today's video we're just going to talk about basic concepts in electrical engineering such as current, voltage, and power. And then we are going to discuss these topics more in depth when it comes to future videos. So let's start the lesson. Okay, so in today's lesson we're going to take a look at voltage, which is in volts or represented with a V. We're going to take a look at power, which is in watts, and we're going to represent with a P. And then current, which is in amperes, amps, or represented with an I. Okay, so we're going to start the video off by talking about current. Now when we think about current, we can think of it as charge in motion. If we were to take a look at a wire and see the charges inside of it, well if the charges were moving in a certain direction, just how fast are those charges moving? So the definition of current is just the measurement of charge that is moved per unit time. Well this measurement is known as an ampere, which is equal to 1 coulomb per 1 second, or 6.25 times 10 to the 8 electrons per second. Now we use I to represent current, Q to represent coulombs, and T to represent seconds. So current I just equals a change in Q over a change in T. So to get a better understanding of how current behaves, we're actually going to take a look at water. If we were to take two pipes and feed it into one pipe, and put three gallons in a pipe, and then two gallons in a pipe, we would expect five gallons to come out. Well, current behaves the exact same way. If we were to take three amps and feed it into one end of the wire, and two amps and feed it to another end of a wire, we would expect five amps to come out. So to simplify it even further, if we just took a wire and fed five amps in, you would expect five amps to come out of it. This is a basic concept known as Kirchhoff's current law, or KCL, and this will be very useful in future topics when we talk about circuit analysis. So now that we've talked about current a bit, let's move on to voltage and how the two relate to one another. So to better understand current and voltage, let's take a look at another fluid analogy where we have a pump and a turbine connected by pipes. The most important thing to remember is that the rate of the water flowing out of the pump is the same as the rate of the water flowing into the pump. Now let's take a look at when we first turn the system on. Water is going to start flowing out of the pump and it's going to hit the turbine. But the turbine isn't going to start turning right away. There needs to be a pressure buildup between the pump and the turbine in order for it to turn. Now once that energy is used by the turbine, the water is going to come out of the turbine to the pump with little or no energy. So the pressure out is greater than the pressure in. Now let's take a look at an actual circuit with a battery, a wire, and a light instead of a pump, a pipe, and a turbine. Just like the water in the pipe, current is going to flow out of the battery at the same rate as current flows into the battery. And just like there needed to be a pressure difference across the turbine in order for it to turn, there needs to be a voltage difference across the light bulb in order for it to light. This is the same voltage difference that it is also across the battery. And again, the voltage out needs to be greater than the voltage in. So we can think of a volt as a change in work over a change in charge, where 1 volt equals 1 joule per coulomb or V equals a change in W over a change in Q. The last thing we're going to take a look at is power and how it's related to current and voltage. Power is just the rate at which energy is produced. So power is just a change in work over a change in time. So if you recall from earlier that current is just the amount of charge per time, and that voltage is just the amount of work done by a charge, you might recognize that the product of the two actually equals power, where power equals voltage times current all right, well, thanks for watching the show. I hope you learned something. I appreciate everyone left me feedback on the previous video and let me know what they thought. Um, I think you can notice a big difference between this video and the previous video. So uh, one thing I did notice in this video was that the auto brightness on the camera kept on trying to adjust itself. So you kind of see the glares going in and out of the video. Uh, I wasn't going to reshoot everything over again. So I'm going to try to fix that in the next video. But I think that was my only complaint. But please let me know if you have any others. What else? Um, these videos are going to be like kind of building off of one another. It's not just going to stay basic. It's going to be basic right now and then continue on to something more difficult. Difficult. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, um, the next video should be about schematics and how to read them and just how to easier ways to understand them for beginners. And then I think we, I want to do a microcontroller one going over like basic uh, Arduino and then micro EVR and stuff like that. So, but yeah. So again, thank you for watching the video and I hope you watch some more and I hope you eat s'mores. Deuces.